Firstly, I would like to thank uh, my followers on my channel, my YouTube channel. I really appreciate your support and also the fact that you consistently watching my videos and commenting. And I also thank you for liking most of my videos. And um, um, it, it's it's very it's I don't take it for gran for granted because really. Um, you are the ones who are making it happen. You are making me to keep on sharing the content on, on this channel. Um, for those who are new, who are just watching this video for the first time, I would like to ask you that uh, you subscribe to my channel and uh, press that notification button. And uh, don't forget to like and also share some of the, the videos that I'm, share, I'm, I'm sharing. Um, this channel, uh, this channel actually um, is, is there for you. It's there to help um, my fellow Africans um, to see what ways can we use to actually empower ourselves. Um, we have got um, Africans who are originally, uh, who are actually born in Africa, and also we've got Africans who are born overseas. Um, I, you will hear me most of the times giving some tips for our fellow Africans coming from overseas because they are actually planning to come down to Africa and I will share most of the uh, tips for them because I know that it's not easy uh, for somebody to just um, decide to migrate and come to Africa uh, because of the culture shock. For us um, who are born in Africa, even if we go outside and we live somewhere for many years, we come back, it's very easy for us to uh, adapt to the situation although you will still find things very difficult if you have been living outside africa for a long time but uh, the main thing that i would like to say is that um, africa has got a lot of opportunities plenty it's actually uh, a mine of opportunities but now uh, we are actually failing to tap into these opportunities instead we find that people from the west they come here and then they tap these opportunities the sad thing is that when they do that, then they eventually will take the money and then go out of Africa with it, and we, we don't benefit anything. There are so many opportunities. The reason why I'm saying this is that uh, I think in Africa what we forget is, is that uh, or any type of challenge that you are facing in your community is actually an opportunity. And uh, it's very difficult for many people to understand that. And it was difficult for me to understand that, but until recently, I don't know what just happened in my head that I just uh, suddenly came to realize that uh, the challenges is where the opportunities are. So when I was um, living in South Africa, I wanted to come back home, uh, start a business, but I didn't know what type of business I was going to start. There were so many businesses that people were doing, like maybe selling second-hand cars, selling furniture, selling clothes, you know, traveling up and down, buying spares to sell in Malawi, you know, things like that. And um, I wanted to, I was thinking, what can I do those business? But when I looked at it, I saw that there were just so many people doing the same business and making it very difficult for somebody to actually survive. Now, because you're too many, people don't, are not willing to pay cash for your products. So they, they will take the, your stuff on, on credit. And then when do they do that, you struggle to actually get your money back. So I, I, st I started thinking now, what, what, then, what is the business that I can do uh, for myself if I go back home to Malawi? So while I was living in South Africa, um, first of all, what I did when I decided that I wanted to come back, I actually started buying books. So I realized that uh, I needed to get enough knowledge. Um, I knew that if I say, for instance, I come here, I'm not an engineer, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a technician. I never studied any of those things. So I couldn't come here and start um, uh, an engineering field because I wasn't an engineer or uh, a mechanic workshop. That's what I thought by then. So I, st I started buying books to start empowering myself with some knowledge. I wanted to find out the, the, the richest people in the world, what do they do? So, and I also started going on Google to, to search to see you know, people who are doing business, what kind of businesses are they doing? What, 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 what inspires them? What ticks them? 
And then I discovered that uh, property, actually people, property was the number one um, uh, field of business that most of the entrepreneurs in the world were um, uh, going through. If it doesn't matter whether they are in IT or whatever, but they will still be somewhere along the line uh, linked with property. And I knew that if I could come home, um, I could take that as an advantage. So what I did was I needed to know what the situation was in Malawi when it comes to the property industry. So I was asking questions. I asked my sister, asked friends to, uh, to give me information about the property uh, business in Malawi. But none of the people could give me you know, good information for me to actually process. So I tried to um, Google Malawi property, but I couldn't get nothing. But I, I started, but I still told myself, I said, but even though I'm failing to get anything, but I'm sure any country, if you are involved in property, I'm sure you should be doing well. Uh, when I started looking behind, you know, looking backwards, and there were people in, in our days when we were young that were very rich, and the, the, these people, they were involved in property. They were owning hotels. There was a, a man in Malawi who was, uh, I knew those days in my home in Balaka, he had a motel in town and he had um, some hotels all across Malawi. So I knew that uh, if I could go in that uh, field, then it would help me. So I started buying books, um, magazines, property magazines, and I also started buying book, property books and uh, also did a lot of um, intensive uh, research on property. Um, but now I was also lucky because then in South Africa, I was, um, we were privileged to have been given a, an RDP house uh, because of my wife. So that house was just a 50, five meter by five meter room with a small bathroom in there. So I, I, I said, this is where I'm going to learn more about the property. So I went to the municipal, I, I, I asked for somebody to draw me a plan for extending of the house, and I took it for approval uh, in the, right there in South Africa, in, in power. And then after approving, approving the property, uh, I mean the plan, I started doing some work inside. So the five meter by five meter room that we were in was to become the kitchen the future kitchen of the house. So I took some space of that area and started building in carpentry cabinets, tiling. And at the time, I didn't know anything about tiling and cabinet, cabinet making. So I went, I started going to hardwares and reading books, magazines, YouTube. And then when I went to look for tiles at CTM and I was talking to a guy who was selling tiles in the tile shop section. And the guy told me there's a DVD that you can buy. They had a, a few series of DVDs. Uh, there was uh, DVDs of how to tile, DVDs of how to install your toilet, uh, how to do plumbing. And there was a couple of DVDs. So I bought these DVDs and I started watching them at home. And then I, I watched the tile uh, DVD and then I did my first tiling in the uh, kitchen. And I got so excited, so fired up. So the bathroom that was already existing in that house, I made it much bigger. And then I turned, I built in there a bathtub and a shower and a toilet. And all this I did by, my, by, by myself. I remember my wife, uh, she told her friends that um, my husband is busy with, with plumbing. And they were like, is he a plumber? And she said, no. They said, Yo, tell your husband he mustn't do that. You cannot do plumbing if you're not a plumber. He's going to mess up everything. But I, was, I just laughed about it. And then I did the plumbing. So I, I eventually became a plumber, I became a tiler, and also a cabinet maker. So I suddenly knew that I was getting excited. So the next thing that I did was to extend the house. And we asked a certain man to come and build for us to do the extension. And while he was building, I asked him if I can be uh, the guy who's going to be mixing. You must show me how to mix the cement. And whenever he wants a block, you can ask me. So as he was building, I was watching this guy. So I was learning. And he was building with cement blocks. And... Uh, uh, Eventually, after doing this, I decided to make a trip to come home just to see, in 20, that was in 2010, just to see what, you know, to have a feel. If I come home and do the business in property, how is it going to be? So I, I left South Africa, took, brought with me some money that I had saved, and then uh, came uh, to, to, to Blanta here in Malawi, Blanta, and then I, uh, I was able to scout for plots. I mean, for houses, and then I found a dilapidated house, a very old house. 
and I just fell in love with this house. I said, this is where I'm going to learn everything. So I bought this house, and it was in very bad shape. But I knew that, you know, with what I had learned, I could do some work on it. And with the magazines that I used to read, the house and home magazines, I knew that I can transform this house into something. So I paid for this house, and then uh, it had, a, it had a, a, a crack on one side, and I decided to um, b uh, extend that side, break that wall that was cracked, and just do an extension. And when I looked around, as I said, I was looking for cement blocks, and um, there was no cement blocks to be found anywhere. All the houses in that time in Malawi were being built with bricks. Then I said, no, but I want to build my house with cement blocks. And somebody told me there were some boys who were making blocks. They just made blocks and piled and were trying to sell them, but nobody was buying. So I went there, I bought those blocks. And then I brought, I started building my house. I had only seven days to do that extension. In that, in that seven days, I did the extension and even did the roof. When I was going back to South Africa, I had done the roof. So I was very excited and very fired up. So I knew I found the business that I could do in Malawi. Number one, I was going to property, buying houses, fixing them and selling. Number two, there was no cement blocks in Malawi. So I was going to introduce cement blocks in Malawi. So today, you can look behind me, you're seeing these cement blocks in Malawi. I'm the one who pushed these cement blocks. That was in 2011 when I came. Started talking about cement blocks in Malawi and we had a lot of um, arguments about it. A lot of people argued with me about it, but then eventually I succeeded. We started making cement block machines and I actually, uh, today I'm selling cement block machines. Although the, the business, when I came, I bought that house and I renovated it. After I finished it, within a, within a month, I was able to sell the house. And the same month I bought another one. It took me another month to, uh, or two to finish the other one. And after finishing that house, in fact, by the time I was finishing the second house, there were, a client had already come and booked the house and said, this is my house, please don't sell it. I was very, very, very amazed that I, I bought a house and renovated, but it was sold out already before I had finished. And then uh, that's when somebody asked me to say, uh, Ted, we want you to build, I want you to build my, my house in Lilongwe, and I want you to build cement blocks. So, this trip when I was coming from South Africa, I, I brought with me um, a cement block machine, manual machine. So when she said she wanted uh, me to build using um, uh, cement blocks, I knew that it wasn't going to be difficult, I was going to use this machine. So it was an opportunity for me to also uh, start making blocks. I didn't even know how to make blocks, I just bought this machine, I saw it in the newspaper in South Africa when I was coming. So I started going on YouTube. Uh, to learn how to make uh, uh, cement block using manual. There was a company in South Africa that was making cement block machines and they had videos explaining. I started studying that. I started uh, going on Google and researching and then we started building this woman's house. Yeah, we, although I actually um, made, uh, when we made the blocks, we, we had done some mistakes out of it. We made blocks and we didn't properly cure it. And, and up to the time that the house was finished. And uh, some engineers came and checked the blocks, they found that the blocks were not uh, good enough. So I had no choice but to break the house down. So we broke the house down, I had to use my money, my savings that I had in South Africa to rebuild this house. And it was a very, very tough uh, experience, but now it was a learning experience. I discovered that uh, blocks needed to be watered and given water, enough water for curing. And uh, today, we are making very good blocks, strong blocks, and actually, I, a lot of people, when they want to know more about cement blocks, they come to me and I actually uh, educate them about cement blocks. And uh, that's, that's when I was building this house, I was sharing the information on Facebook, and it attracted a lot of attention. So there was a lot of questions to be asked about what was, I was doing. It was a strange thing for people to see an individual building a house using cement blocks. By the time I finished that house, people started asking me questions about blocks. So every time I, I would be answering questions about cement blocks until in 2013, when somebody asked me, Ted, I like what you're doing and I th I'm interested. I also want to uh, uh, build my house using cement blocks. How can I get the machine? That's when I started making this cement block machine. Since then, I've been busy with making of the cement block machines that I never went back to buying houses anymore. I had uh, some of the money that I reserved, it actually, um, some of it, I, the money was finished. 
So, but lucky enough, I had bought a plot and started building the house that I'm living in. I had bought two plots, the one for my house and the other one for this uh, workshop. Yeah, so I don't regret. Um, I will go back to uh, flipping of houses. I think there is a bigger um, opportunity in, in Blanta for that business. So I will go back to doing that business. But I wanted first to focus on the machine uh, making business. And I've perfected it now. And here we are, we built a workshop. Uh, we are going to even start making the, the, the um, what you call the industrial machine. I want to be making the big machine that's coming from China because I've seen that the people who are upgrading for my machine, they are buying the machine from China. So I don't want people to be going back to China to buy that. They must, once they upgrade from the, the machine I'm making now, they can buy the big industrial machine from me. So I'm busy doing research for next year, early next year, we're going to start building this machine. It's going to be full automated. It won't be like fully automated, but um, we will um, skip the, the, the computerized side. So it, the people will manually, uh, physically, uh, you know, operate the, the vibrator, shifting the motor and then pushing the blocks to the other side. The mechanical side is going to be where the blocks will be stuck, but most of this will be buttons. People will be controlling buttons and making blocks. And I think that machine will help a lot because people will be able to produce some, up to 5,000 or 10,000 blocks per day, which is very good. Currently, our machine, the one that we're making now, it's producing about 1,500 uh, blocks. So yeah, um, family, this is what I'm doing. And uh, I think uh, there's a lot that I'm going to share with you. We are going to start producing tractors. Uh, so we'll do the push tractor and also a utility uh, tractor. So I, I, you'll be watching this. I'm, I'm going to try as much as possible to be sharing the process as I'm building this thing. So that's why I'm encouraging you to like and subscribe uh, and also share my videos. So because if you subscribe, you'll be able to, and also you, if you uh, press the notification button, you'll be notified every time I post a video. Uh, once the factory, uh, the, the factory, this factory is finished, um, I'll have an office for me to be doing editing of my videos and you'll be getting good quality videos and I'm also going to build buy some lights I can see now you're seeing that it's just darkening and all those things I'll get uh, proper lighting and I'll get proper um, uh, cameras I've already got this the, 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 the go go uh, the small what is it go go power of, um, uh, cameras I've got those ones, uh, two of them, uh, so that I can give you some cross range when I'm busy uh, welding or doing something. Yeah, so everything that I'm going to be doing, I, I want to try as much as possible to be sharing with you. I'm very happy to see that the diasporans are actually very um, interested in my projects. Uh, there are some diasporans who want to be working with me, and uh, I'll be giving you the news very soon. If everything works out, um, we, I'm, I'm going to open a branch in Gambia, so we'll be making some... Um, uh, machines and we also be making blocks that side then Gambia is going to be like the base and from there we're going to expand and we'll try we'll try uh, to see if we can just be sp uh, spreading our machines across West Africa so thank you very much for sitting down and listening to me I really appreciate um, it's not easy to do business in Africa it's very tough but we're trying our best uh, we don't want to give up and um, uh, I believe that we, you, you just need to be patient, uh, patient and uh, have a lot of patience and also persevere. Perseverance is very important uh, in Africa. And you, you have to be able to wait until the right time comes. In the beginning, it is very tough. But as it goes to, towards um, a few years, after three, four years and you, you are in business, you, things start becoming much easier. So things are now starting to become easy for me. It has been a, a roller coaster, but now things are getting better. Yeah, so if you have got questions and there are some topics that you'd like me to touch on, please feel free uh, to suggest those top topics. Thank you very much.